Vivian Green, so great to see you. Thank you, good to see you. It is the inaugural LA Soul Music Festival, and we can't get enough soul. Yeah. I mean, with everything going on, and the music these days, so much computers and technology, and so great to get back to real singing, real players, yeah. and real songs. How does it wow. feel to be a part of that? It feels great. I think it's awesome. The lineup is awesome. All three days, it's really awesome. It's every every kind of R&B soul, you know? It's every every artist doesn't sound the same here, you know? <laughs> so I think it's really great that we can all be here and be and be a part of this. And I get to see some of my friends I haven't seen in a while. Because a lot of times when you're friends with another artist, you only see each other if, you have, if you're on the same bill, yeah. or at an award show, or at the airport maybe, or you know, at the Beverly Center. <laughs> So it's a little bit of a but, reunion. Yeah, like absolutely. Yeah, That's for great. sure. Well, I know you're from Philly, and I obviously am. Philly's had a huge soul history. Yeah, it's amazing you know. music history. Period. And yeah, the, the the whole Philly sound was kind of like the Motown there in the East Coast. Yeah. When you were growing up, though, what were like the first artists that really spoke to you that you had to go out and buy, and you just fell head it's over heels? You mentioned Motown because it's it's an ironic thing for me. My parents were huge Motown fans. So while people probably thought that I grew up listening to Philly International, which I did later on in life, yeah. my parents, when I was my formative years growing up, we they blared Motown through the house. It's all about the Supremes, Holland Dozier, Holland, you know, um, all that amazing stuff. I'm um, Stevie Wonder, obviously, yeah. Jackson Five. Like that's like what I grew up on, honestly. I, I think I know like all those songs. <laughs> They are the soundtrack to our lives. Yeah. But yeah, what amazing sure. like run they had, you know. Amazing, you legendary. It'll never be repeated. Yeah, it'll never be repeated. It's amazing. Yeah, I still yeah. listen to it now. Like when people ask me what I'm what I listen to, it's like rarely anything current. It's like I Can't just listen wrong. to Motown's greatest hit. Yeah. <laughs> I just listen to Inner Visions. Like I just you know, that's that's like my music, so Yeah. Yeah. Well I, I know you got a big break in uh, working with Joe Scott at the age of nineteen. I did. Talk um, about how that happened and what you learned from working with her. Well, I mean, I was her background singer. I think people assumed that I was something more than that. <laughs> but, you know, I was her background just being singer. in the room. You got and, you know, some and it, was, it was at the very beginning of her career. So okay. it was before she is the Jill Scott that she is now. It was like I was there to see um, the promotional tour before her first album even dropped. I was there then. And then maybe about a year after that. And then I, then I left. So I saw like the beginnings of like, you know, this legendary artist. So that was like, it was really cool. Yeah, I, I saw the beginning of it, like literally. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Well, I know you worked with Cindy Lauper too. We yeah, love Cindy. yeah, Talk Cindy, about that. Um, Cindy and I, we had the same manager for a really long time, Lisa Barbary, who is still somebody that I love dealing with, someone that I'm very close to. So yeah, so um, Cindy asked me to be on her album, um, Acoustic Soul, and um, yeah, and I said, of course I'm gonna be on your album. <laughs> So that was awesome. She's really sweet. She's and so crazy underrated. And fun. A lot, a lot of people think she's just the girl that. But you know wants what? She fun. tours all year round every summer. She's fine, and she won the Tony for Kinky Boots. Oh, yeah. yeah, she's she, amazing. She's way broader than a lot of people. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. she's amazing. Like live, she's amazing. It's like really one of the best voices. Like her range. Like she's really an incredible vocalist. So and and musician as well. So yeah, I love her. Sure. And what advice do you have to young talent coming up? What do they really need to concentrate on to have any kind of longevity or really uniqueness? Um, just stay true to yourself and make the music that's in your heart and try not to make the music that somebody makes you make because there's a hot producer out and they want you to have his beat because mm -hmm. record companies do that. And don't I think that's trends. not always the way. You know, it's cool sometimes, but don't get so sucked into that that you lose your own art, you know. So yeah. that's the advice that I would give. But, you know, it's a difficult business to be in. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to tell the truth <laughs> it's a difficult business you're to be in to stand out. it's a constant hustle possible. yeah and you you do have to be true to yourself you have to be unique um, and uh, and work really really hard to stay afloat honestly you really do you can't take long breaks especially not now when everything is so instant like between my my third and fourth album I took like five years off like I could not do that now you know right. and and it was difficult then to come back even at that time so now with like social media just off the yeah. chain and yeah. all the digital um, media online like you can't do that anymore so you have to be consistent and keep putting out music keep releasing music and keep releasing videos you know keep posting all that stuff is important nowadays yeah I can't say that I love all that stuff <laughs> but I do it because I know I have to so yeah